Hello, dear friends. May you all be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. What I mean is, may the skills that Satan has used to block people's mind, may your mind be unblocked right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what your drama, your need, your pain is. I don't know. But I know one thing, that God allows, He has allowed the afflictions so that we may know Him. When you read the Old Testament, you, you see that God was always blessing His people. And whenever people were blessed, they would quickly forget God. And then God would send enemies. That's exactly that. God would send enemies so that Israel would have to fight to remain alive. That is the great teaching that we see in the Old Testament. The story of Israel shows that every time that the Israelites would turn to God, they were blessed. But when they would turn their back on Him because they were very blessed, then God would send again the enemies. He would stir up enemies against them. And I believe that this is a clear way, but very clear way, transparent, a clear way of God speaking to us. Because woe to me, and I say about me personally, woe to me if it wasn't for the afflictions the persecutions, the hatred, the injustices I faced. Woe to me if it wasn't for the problems that I faced. Because I'd be for sure, as they usually say, sat back, relaxed, living my life without thinking of my father. So he allows the problems. He allows the problems to all of us, all those who at some moment in life forget where we came from. We forget of the salvation that God provided to us. And this is a fact. It's a reality. And if you are going through difficult moments, see what the prophet, the psalmist said there in Psalm 119, verse 71. He says like this, It is good, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes, your word your commandment. So he confesses that it was good for him to have been afflicted. What for? That he would learn God's statutes. I remember that I've always been very fearing towards my father. My father was a very strict man, but very, very strict perhaps because he didn't have a childhood per se. He suffered a lot. Life for him was very bitter. So he, when he brought us up, he did so with much rigor, we can say, much, you know, discipline. My father didn't have to say anything, just his look, would make us fear and tremble. And I learned the fear of God with my dad here on earth. 
because he was very strict, extremely strict. And as I didn't want to be beat up then, I would obey him. Everything he said I would do. Everything. Because I didn't want to get beat up. And of course, God does not beat us up. God doesn't. He allows us to experience problems and to harvest the fruit of our disobedience here on earth. He allows that. He certainly does. And what for? It's so that we will cry out to Him and remain in communion with Him. This is clear throughout the whole Bible. The prophet said that it was good that he was afflicted so that he could know God's statutes, God's laws. The apostle also said that we should not, we should not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Everything that a man sows, that he will also reap. I reap today what I sowed yesterday. I will reap tomorrow what I'm sowing today. Because this is the word of God. It's not my word. It's not my thoughts, but it's the word of God. You who are suffering today, right now in this moment, you are suffering because somehow you started I don't know what you did, and I don't want to know, but one thing I know, we reap today what we sowed yesterday, and we are going to reap tomorrow what we are sowing today. If we sow obedience to the Word of God, then from God, from the Word of God, we are going to receive the blessings of obedience. However, if we disobey Him, if we disobey His word and follow our instincts, our will, our lusts, our mistakes, then we are going to reap the fruits of them all, all of them. They will bear bitter fruits. And then people complain. And sometimes, Sometimes, almost always, the person blames God because of their misfortune and suffering and disgrace. And God has nothing to do with that. God gave us freedom for us to think and make our own choices. That's how it was with my father. My father knew that we couldn't disobey him, but if we did we would know that we were going to get a bit, and his hand was heavy, very heavy. Therefore, dear friends, imagine you, come on, who has already been blessed, sowed what was good, reaped great things from God, but because they were doing well, they were satisfied, their belly was full, they didn't need any, anything else, so they turned their back on God and started to live their life as they wanted, to live anyhow, according to their will. Well, they certainly will harvest, no doubt, what they are sowing. So, it's pointless when a person or when a problem comes because of disobedience, there's no other way, dear friend. There's no point of prayer and fasting. It's pointless. You have to harvest the fruit. You will harvest the bitter fruit of your disobedience. And then you cannot complain. What you need to do is to convert, is to repent of what you've done wrong, what you are doing wrong, dive or rather, you must be buried in the water through the baptism and receive the Holy Spirit to guide your life so that you won't sow bad fruits anymore. 
Anyway, I'd like you not to forget this. It is good. He recognized, the psalmist recognized, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. David was a man after God's own heart. David was greatly loved by God, but still he reaped the fruit of what he sowed. Up until today, Israel suffers the consequences of David's sin. God said to him, no sword will ever lack in your house. Those who are David's descendants know what the sword really is because they always, always will reap the fruits of what they sowed. David was saved. David was saved. He converted, he repented, and was saved for sure. However, the rotten fruit of what he had sown he continued to reap up until his death. And after his death, his children, his grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, all of them reaped. But then you say, oh, this is unfair. Well, but they also made mistakes. They also failed. They also did wrong. So there's no way to escape this rule. You, I, any of us, it does not matter the spiritual level we are in, it doesn't matter if you were or you are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Whatever you sow, you are going to reap. What I'm sowing, I will reap, whether I like it or not. That's the reality. There's no other way. Therefore, dear friends, be careful. The Word of God instructs, it teaches us the way of life. The words of the Lord are spirit and life. However, those who don't obey them, those who don't follow the word, will suffer the consequences. So, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. I learned the fear of God with my father. It was through hardships that I learned. That's how it is. That's how I learned the fear of the Lord with my father. He, he wasn't easy. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. May God bless you all. And today is a day for you who want to repent from what you've done. Even if you have to reap the fruits of what you've done, you can repent and start to sow, to sow the good seed today with intelligence, intelligent faith, so that you may reap the good fruits tomorrow. Start sowing what's good today according to God's word, and tomorrow you will start to harvest the good fruits. And God will bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.